Yo, Elliot, after having a major breakthrough in my life, God quickly threw me into catabasis, which has been ongoing now for several weeks. How do I successfully navigate and transition out of this breakdown phase? So for the, those of you guys who don't know, catabasis is a Greek word meaning to go down. And I first started using that word when I uh, listened to the book Iron John by Robert Bly. Very, very, very good book. It's, about, it's a book about men. That's what it was called. It's called Iron John, a book about men. But even more so, it's about a man's journey in life, in finding himself. And then there's a lot of uh, philosophy, psychology, and theology that's thrown in there, and poetry. It's a fantastic book. But he describes how a man reaches a point in his life where things are going good um, and he's coasting along in life, but things aren't exactly as they seem and that there's something lurking underneath that is begging to be acknowledged, right? And it doesn't necessarily mean that that thing that wants to be acknowledged is right, Right. So, for example, you know, you, you, you settle down, you have a wife and children and uh, you got a career, you got a job. But there, but deep down inside you, there's there's this part of you that always thought you were going to be a professional athlete and you still haven't resolved that. <laughs> it still like bothers you on the inside. <laughs> Or anything. Right. You always thought that your wife was going to be a certain way, but instead she's a different way or um, you harbor a, a hidden addiction or sentiment. So it's about stuff that's in the shadow that needs to be dealt with, right? Things that are in the unconscious or that you're conscious of, but you're lying about, right? You know, having an affair, anything like that. Just things that are going on in the dark. Life could go on as normal for a long time, but eventually every penny must be paid. <laughs> All that, my mom says, any, all that happens in the dark will eventually come to light, from, from dark to light. So a catabasis is when that, what's in the dark comes to the light, and all of a sudden your life is thrown into a tizzy. And it could happen through a catastrophe. It could happen through all kinds of shit. car accident, a disease, um, a divorce. All of a sudden, life is coasting, and then, bang, you're like, whoa, it seems like out of nowhere. But that, that is, in a, in a way, is a grace. Let me explain to you why. Because, so for example, I had a, uh, I got a splinter in one of my fingers, in my finger not too long ago. And the splinter went in and it went under the flesh. And so I knew it was under there and I could feel it. I was like, damn, man, I know that's in there. But I just ignored it. I was like, oh, it's underneath there, whatever. Let's see what happens. And then a couple of weeks later, it started to hurt more and my fingers turning red. And I'm like, damn, that shit is getting infected. It's underneath there. Rather than getting the splinter out in the beginning, I let it sit under there for weeks. It must have been in there for three, four weeks. Now it's getting infected. And the only thing I could do now is I got to cut that finger open. I had to, I had to dig in. I had to cut, dig it out. And so I had to wound it even more so that I can get in there. And then finally I dig in and there's pus in there. It's bad. It wasn't that bad. It could have been worse. But I dig in and they're like pus is coming out and squeezing pus. And then finally the splinter comes out. But all that pain to bring that to the surface and all that pus that comes out and now my flesh is exposed. Now that it reaches the air, now that it came to the surface, it could be healed. My finger felt better the next day. And because my flesh heals pretty quick, I was like, whoa, it healed. It all healed up. So in a way that's catabasis. You, you needed to be, you needed to dig into something, something needed to be traumatized in your life, you need to be traumatized to get that splinter that was hanging out that you was trying to pretend like it wasn't there. <laughs> Try to get that to come to the surface. And then now that it came out, even though it hurts and now it's exposed, it's, it gets the air and it can start to heal. 
So in a way, these catabasis are, are, are God's way of giving us the grace to, to work on our own salvation. Right? You, God can't purge you of something if, it's not, if, if it stays hidden. So catabasis is about going down. It's the word means go down. And what happens when you go down? When you go down, you got to deal with what's happening in the dark. And God will do it in, in all kinds of crazy ways. You sideways, it just come out of nowhere, like bang. Whoa, you thought you were going to get away with that? Now you got to deal. And it, it could be, listen, it's not even necessarily, it's like, it's not even necessarily the very related to the very thing that you're doing always. God works in mysterious ways. You could be having an affair, right? Let's say you're cheating on your wife. And you don't, it's not necessarily that you got caught cheating on your wife, but you get into an accident and now both your legs are, are paralyzed. Now you got to face yourself. And you got you to face your brokenness. And when you face your brokenness, you face your sinfulness. And you got nothing to do now but to sit by, lay by yourself in that hospital bed. Meanwhile, your wife is coming in and taking good care of you. And you feeling all the grief associated with your sinful choices. You may or may not resolve that by telling your wife or, you know, I'm not saying what's the right thing to do there, but maybe you do. But now you have to, now you really get to confront because you can't go see your, you can't go see your uh, mistress anymore. Bad shit. Everything comes to the surface. So catabasis is when things that were, that are happening down below come to the surface or, or things that are underneath the surface need to be dealt with. Another way that a catabasis happens is there's a great book by a woman named um, Alison Armstrong. It's called uh, The Way of Man, something like um, the, miraculous, the Miraculous Development of Man, something like that. And it's about a, a man's journey. It's not about the, the path in man's life. And she talks about different stages. She calls you when you're a boy, you're a page, and then you're a knight, and then you're a warrior, and then you're at different stages of warrior. And there's a, there's a, early warrior, a middle warrior, and a late warrior. And a lot of you guys are probably like in your middle warrior stage. Some of you in your early warrior stage. But the, but the late warrior stage, I this is what happened to me, literally what happened to me when I was about 34 years old, uh, 35, 36. I was in my late warrior stage. Meaning, yo, you achieved it. You're on top now. You did it. All that that you were working for and striving for, it's like, man, Look at me, I'm here, but you're not done because you're not a king yet. What she says is that, and, and Robert Bly so, uh, says this too. This is like, this is archetypal stuff. Robert Moore says this. When you're a late warrior, you don't become a king. Just imagine it's a mountain and you come to the top of it. You come to a peak when you're a late warrior. You don't become a king because there's nowhere higher to go. You have to climb down that mountain. You got to be pushed down that mountain so that you could climb up another, The Amazing Development of Men is the name of the book. I just remember, Alison Armstrong. You gotta go down before you can go back up. There's no king without what she calls it, she calls it the tunnel phase. Robert Bly calls it catabasis. There's no, you have to come out of the tunnel. You have to go into the tunnel and out of the tunnel in order to become a king so it's a natural it's a natural stage in a man's life and it usually once again it's all the same once again it's a matter of going back down in order to retrieve something that was lost or something that was ignored that's what it was for me too i lost i lost a part of myself on my way up the mountain you know i was becoming i don't know very sensitive Nobody else could tell except me. But I was becoming something that I really wasn't, right? And I realized that on an unconscious level. And, you know, people were so funny, like, oh, Elliot, what happens to you? Elliot, you changed. I'm like, y'all don't recognize that. I don't change. You just see more and more of me. <laughs> you just get to see me more clearly as I really am. 
and there and I'm also multi-dimensional too. There's lots of parts to me. I'm you know I'm a weird guy that way. So but they're all a part of me. They all always been a part of me. But I went down to go retrieve this part of me that I that I didn't want to acknowledge. I didn't want to look at. And it was all my effeminacy. I didn't want to deal with my effeminacy. I didn't want to deal with that my weaknesses on the inside because I'm a strong man. And I'm a, I'm a strong man for my woman and I'm a strong man for my family. I'm a strong man for millions of men worldwide. But when that old hippie Elliot came out, when I grew my hair, I had that mohawk, I started getting more tattoos and I was smoking weed. That was me diving into that part of myself, that weak part of myself that I tried to pretend wasn't there. And I went fully into it. That was my catabasis. I went fully into it. That sounds like Christ descending into hell. Yeah. That's interesting too. Yeah, Christ before he becomes king, right? Christ is king. Christ goes down to hell and opens the gates of hell. That's what we, in fact, that's a lot of what it is. You go down, you open it. That's what I did. I opened the gates of hell. You go down and you open the gates of hell. And so I went down and I warn people, I warn y'all, I've warned y'all. If you watch my videos, especially these King Transformation videos long enough, I've warned you about being careful about that. Be careful about going down there and playing with those demons. This is why I often say things like, don't trust your feelings. Don't take these things so seriously. Because you go down there, you open up the gates to hell, and you don't know what kind of demons are going to come out. Yeah. <laughs> I think about, I cringe sometimes about the demons that I let out, the Elliot demons that I let out. And I was, I was struggling, but, I, but I, I numbed myself with weed. I smoked weed. Here I am, right? Who starts smoking weed at 35 years old? I know nobody's, you smoke weed, smoking weed is like for kids, <laughs> right? Got young men, right? 35 years old. I never, I, I barely smoked weed in my entire life. But I went and I opened up the gates of hell. And you open yourself up too. When you open yourself, open up that gate, those gates to hell, you can, um, it's a slippery slope. So I know your question is, you know, how do I successfully navigate this breakdown phase? Well, recognize that you got everything I'm saying right now. Be very careful. Be very detached. Don't take anything personally. Don't trust your thoughts. Don't trust your feelings. You're swimming in a sea of, of Satan. Many, many little di different Satans down there. You're just, I mean, I think that's a great way to describe it. Like when uh, Rob says, uh, you, 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 like Christ descended into hell. And like I'm talking about right now, all those things that are hiding in the dark, right? You might need to de deal with. You might need to deal with things that are hiding in the dark, things that are unresolved. Um, but you got to be strong about it. And, and I don't mean strong, like uh, willful, about it. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about being willful about it. I mean strong meaning detached, stoic about it, non-judgmental about it. Because it is through our attachment, our feelings and our judgments about these things that are down there that cause us to um, stay down there longer than we need to. But every man, here's another way Robert Black describes it. He says, you're going into an oven to be cooked. I think Robert Blood, somebody says it this way. You're going into an oven to be cooked. And it takes, you know, depending on the recipe, it takes a long, a different amount of heat and a different amount of time for you to be fully cooked. And so you don't know what that's going to be. But if you're resisting the heat or you're trying to, you're trying to escape the oven, it's going to take you to longer, to longer to cook. Imagine you, imagine you baking bread. And every two minutes, somebody open up the oven and looking in, looking in to see if it's done cooked. What are you doing? You're letting the heat out. You're letting the heat out. So you got to be down there with the heat, but you just got to allow God to do his work in you. That's really what it's about. It's about loving yourself the way God loves you and being open to his guidance and revelation in your life in that moment. Don't try to be in control. Don't try to force anything. Don't try to make anything happen. Don't make any rash judgments or actions. 
This is the worst time to make big decisions. This is a lot of times where men will like, um, they'll, they'll have a divorce or they'll blow a lot of money on something stupid or like me, start smoking weed. Don't, don't get involved with anything different or grandiose or make any big decisions right now. Cause you're not, you're upside down. You don't know up from down right now. Your best bet is to be still. Don't do anything. Don't think anything. Don't feel anything. Just watch, just observe and wait and pray. A big part of this is reliance on God. A big part of this, huge part of this is recognizing, oh, I can't do this by myself. You have to rely on God's grace. This is a part of the reason why God sends you into a, into a catabasis. Part of the reason why God sends people into a catabasis is especially, I mean, I know it was for me, is to show me that I, my will is not strong enough. That's a part of what, what my catabasis was all about was, yo, you think you're so strong, Elliot? You think you could do everything yourself, Elliot? You think that you Mr. Know-it-all alpha male dude? Well, check this out. You can't do anything without me. That's when I came back to the Lord. That's when I reverted back to my faith. I didn't know I was Catholic. <laughs> I had to humble my, God had to humble me back to Catholicism. He was like, listen, bro, you are too big for your britches. You are too prideful for yourself. You need to go and repent. And in our world where, you know, most people, most Catholics aren't really Catholic and most Protestants, you know, they, they have a, a religion of just do whatever you want. I, th I was trying to think in terms of, oh, OK, I'll just repent. I'll just talk to God and I'll just say, oh, I'm sorry. God was like, no, that's not good enough. <laughs> he said, you need to humiliate yourself. You need to humble yourself and go to a priest. And Lord knows when I heard that, I was like, what? Uh-uh. What? A no way. But then it dawned on me. and God was like, yes humble yourself and go and confess your sins and receive absolution. Submit yourself to the authority of another man in my name. And it, and it was that, I think that's what, all of it was about that was God was like, okay, you think you're a tough guy? You're going to be stuck until you come to me on your knees. That's what God wanted from me. So this might be an opportunity for you to get on your knees. That's maybe what God's asking you to do. He's saying, get down on your knees. So these are just different tips, I would say, about how to successfully navigate this transition um, out of the breakdown phase. Don't be in a rush to get out. Don't be in a rush to get out. Just like I said, opening up that oven and letting out the heat. Be where you are fully, experience it fully, but pray and rely on the Lord, dude. Done.